we have already completed the asynchronous counters now we will start the synchronous counters from this presentation I will teach you how to design the synchronous counters by following these five steps that you can see on the left hand side of your screen and uh, this is a very important topic because definitely there will be one problem from this topic in your exams so I hope you will pay more attention in this topic so that you can score a good marks we will solve one problem and implement all these five steps in it and the problem is design two bit synchronous up counter and the step number one says decide the number of flip flops and definitely the type of flip flop that you want to use and you already know from the asynchronous counters the number of flip flop is decided on the basis of the bit of the counter in this case we have a 2 bit synchronous up counter so this 2 bit is telling us to take two flip flops so we are going to use two flip flops this is our step number one and we have to also decide the type of the flip flop that we have to use and let's say I will use J K flip flop for the designing purpose you can also use T or D flip flop there is no problem and the step number two says write the excitation table for the flip flop so we have to write the excitation table for the JK flip flop let's do it the step number two that is the excitation table of JK flip flop okay and uh, in excitation table we already know the input is qn and the other input is qn plus one and we have to find out the values for j and k as there are two inputs we have four possible conditions 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 depending upon this we have to find j k so when qn is 0 this qn is nothing but our present state and this qn plus 1 is our next state so when present state is 0 and next state is also 0 so it is possible only when j is 0 k is 0 or when j is 0 and k is 1 so we will replace this k by a don't care and we have a cross here representing k is the don't care in this case now we will see the next case when qn is 0 and qn plus 1 is 1 and this will happen when j is 1 k is 1 toggling whenever there is a toggling we have to take complement of the previous state and we will take the complement of 0 and it will give us 1 or I can also say that j is 1 and k is 0 so definitely again k is the don't care and j is 1 so I will write j as 1 and k as don't care in the same way we have to complete for the rest two cases and I will write it directly it is 1 a 0 so this is the excitation table for the JK flip-flop that we have selected to design our two bit synchronous up counter so we are done with step number one step number two now the step number three says draw the state diagram and the circuit excitation table and we will first uh, draw the state diagram so step number three in this we will first draw the state diagram so how many state will be there when we have a 2 bit synchronous up counter it is simply 2 to the power n and n is equal to 2 so I have 4 there are 4 states and uh, what is the maximum count it is equal to 4 minus 1 that is 3 so a 2 bit synchronous up counter will start counting from 0 and end its count to 3 so this is what we have to draw in the state diagram and uh, I have been talking about this synchronous counter from a while but I have not told you what is the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous counters the difference is the clock the clock is given simultaneously to all the flip-flops in this case whereas in case of asynchronous counters the clock is not given simultaneously and uh, because of this fact that we are giving the clock simultaneously this type of counter is little bit 
tough to design as compared to the asynchronous one. You have already learned about the asynchronous counters and you have seen that it is not that much tough to design the asynchronous counter. Generally, the pattern is same. But in this case, we have to follow certain steps and then we have to design the counter. So the clock is not simultaneous and we will see it in the designing part when we will implement the obtained equations and draw the logic diagram. Now let's move to the state diagram. We are having the four states. So I will draw the four states. This is state number one, state number two, state number three and state number four. The first state is let's say S0. This is S0. This is S1, S2 and S3. S0 is a zero. So zero, zero. S1 is one. So zero, one. S2 is two. So one, zero. And finally S3 is three. So one or one. And we have to design a up counter that you can see from the problem. So definitely with every passing clock pulse, it will count higher value. We are starting from S0, then we will go on S1, then S2, S3 and again the output of the two flip-flop is 0, 0. This one is Q1 and this one is Q2. The output of the two flip-flops that we are going to use now. And uh, in step 3 we have to also draw the circuit excitation table. So let's draw the circuit excitation table and this is the most important part in the designing and you can see that we are just following the normal step of the designing process in the sequential circuits we are having our state diagram we are going to make the circuit excitation table we will use the excitation table for the flip-flop then we will use kmap and finally the implementation so the first column will have the present state the present state is given by q1 Q2. The column 2 will have the next state Q1 star Q2 star and the column 3 now have J1 K1 and similarly the column 4 will have J2 K2. Okay now Q1 Q2 is 0 0 then you can see when the present state is 0 0 we are having the next state as 0 1 so q1 star and q2 star is 0 1 similarly if the present state is 0 1 the next state is 1 0 you can see the next state is 1 0 and if present state is 1 0 the next state is 1 1 and finally if the present state is 1 1 the next state is 0 0 so we have just followed the transition that is shown by this state diagram and we have written it in the circuit excitation table. Now by using this excitation table of the flip-flop we have to find out the value of J1, K1, J2 and K2. So let's start with J1, K1. For J1, K1 that is the input of our first flip-flop we have to see Q1 and Q1 star. We don't have to see Q2 and Q2 star because they are for the second flip-flop. So let's see when Q1 is 0 and Q1 star is 0 you can see from here J0 and Ks don't care. So J is 0 and K is don't care. Similarly, when Q1 is 0 and Q1 star is 1, from this case, J is 1, K is don't care. So J is 1, K is don't care. And when they are 1, 1, Q1 is 1 and Q1 star is 1, the last case, J is don't care and K is 0. So J is don't care, K is 0. And when they are 1, 0, we have don't care 1. In the same way, I will complete for the second flip-flop. The inputs are J2 and K2, the output is Q2 and the next state is Q2 star. 0, 1 will give me 1 don't care, 1, 0 will give me don't care 1, 0, 1 will give me 1 don't care and then 1, 0 again will give me don't care 1. You can compare it from this table. Now we are done with this step number 3 also and the step number four comes into the action and we have to make the k map to determine the value of j1 k1 j2 k2 as we are having the two variables q1 q2 we have to use a four cell k map so let's make a four cell k map and we need four such maps to reduce the values of j1 k1 j2 and k2 so the input is q1 Q2 0 1 0 1 I will copy this map and paste it four times so that we don't have to make it again 
copy and then paste okay this is the third one and finally the last k map and first I will find out the value of j1 so this k map is for j1 let's fill it 0 1 don't care don't care 0 1 don't care don't care and uh, you can see it is a very simple k map this is the pair and j1 is equal to q2 now we will do the same process for k1 k1 is don't care don't care 0 1 so don't care don't care 0 1 again a very simple case we have k1 as q2 now we will try to find out the input for the flip-flop number two that is j2 and k2 for j2 you can see one don't care one don't care is there so one don't care one don't care and for k2 we have don't care one don't care one so don't care one don't care one and now you can see if i include the don't cares then i have the value of j2 equal to one and in the same way the value of k2 is also equal to 1 so we are having our values of the input and now we can finally move to the step number 5 that is designing of the circuit draw the logic diagram so we will implement it quickly first we will make two flip-flops two jk flip-flops this is my first jk flip-flop and this one is the second jk flip-flop and as it is a synchronous counter the clock is given simultaneously there is a common clock and that is given to both of these flip-flops this is clock and the input j1 is equal to q2 so first I will just make the inputs then we will do the connection this is the output q1 j1 k1 j2 k2 q2 and you can see j1 and k1 both are equal to q2 so i will just connect j1 and k1 with q2 and uh, j2 and k2 are one so j2 and k2 are one so i will give logic one here and we will take the outputs q1 and q2 and these are the output of the clock that will show us the state the present state and the state will keep on changing it will be first a zero then one two three and then back to zero and in this way it will do a counting so this is all for this presentation definitely you can make the timing diagram and see how this circuit is working but i think we are already pushing the time so i will end this presentation here from the next presentation we will see another type of synchronous counter so see you in the next one